Welcome to Stock Odds, Odds and End podcast. This is Dave and Rob getting ready for the week ahead. Good evening, Rob. Well, these are interesting days. Uh, we've got a lot going on in the world, that's for sure. Um, not always the best. Um, and we don't know where it's going to go from here. But uh, anyway, we, we are, we're traders. Our job is to, uh, you know, provide liquidity, correct inefficiencies, um, you know, make some money for our family and and make some money to even have more than enough to give, right? Mm -hmm. So let's uh, focus on some ideas that can help uh, our audience here and uh, review a bit of last week as well. So uh, first off, we have the 15-minute uh, chart here of the SPY uh, for last week. Um, so you can see where we were on Friday. And um, and then, of course, the, the war started on uh, Saturday morning around 6.30 a.m. And then we hit uh, a bit of a dip from Friday's, Friday's close on uh, the open on Monday, and it uh, rallied. Uh, maybe a lot of people didn't expect that necessarily because, you know, of the seriousness of what was going on but uh, it, you know it's happened historically too that uh, war wars in parts of the world or even if the u.s is is cooperating or sending assistance doesn't necessarily mean u.s stock markets sell off um, because they're you know industrials can do well oil can do well um, basic materials sometimes can do well you know, so there can be enough drivers to say that uh, it's not like a wholesale sell-off. Um, and it did it did take a little bit to, you know, to get going. It was in the afternoon that uh, it rallied a bit more. But um, then we had a nice uh, follow-through day. The next day, um, then we kind of traded sideways. And what was the, Dave, testing, a skill testing question here. See if your memory's good. What was the one thing last week that knocked the market down the most you remember what event happened that knocked yeah. the market down? what the cpi no actually no no it was something else just the or the, the war on monday no no we no. didn't it, i mean it opened down and it rallied no what was it it was the treasury auction mm. right here 1 p.m. in the afternoon Eastern time on Thursday and that big sell off bar right there and then it continued to slide. So that was the Treasury auction. That's uh, and it was, you know, under there was less demand. Right. Uh, so um, definitely a signal to us to keep our eyes on the Treasury market. I mean, one thought would be not that I not that I can say it's going to happen, but one thought would be. You know, would would China, for example, if they were going to go and, and take Taiwan, would they sell a, a lot of treasuries before that or or at least stop buying new treasury issues? Um, so there could be a connection there. I'm not sure. But this was definitely an under. De, under demanded or <laughs> under or whatever <laughs> and that's what triggered that sell-off there so that was interesting all right but uh, for the week i mean it was an up week if you look at how we opened down here at 427.58 and uh finished at 431.50 so we did have an up week came off its highs but nonetheless was a good up week Here's some uh, performances uh, for the ETFs. Again, this is more than just the S&P 500. It's a broader market, uh, but energy doing really well. Utilities coming around. Um, they have been overall, uh, you know, having some days that they perform and still not still not the best in the higher interest because they have a bond component. Because, you know, investors could say, well, why would I go into utilities with less growth opportunity and, you know, go after, say, the dividend, but yet I can pretty much achieve that in risk-free returns now. So, 
I'm not too interested in utilities at the moment. But they, every once in a while, they uh, they have their moments, and especially when there could be some extra risk on the table. Consumer defensive did okay on Friday as well. Healthcare. So um, our we had a really bad day on Thursday with our risk off list, but we did a little bit better than that worst day uh, on the same risk off list on Friday. So it really bounced back uh, quite well. You can see the defense, defense, consumer defensive and healthcare were up there in the green. And technology and consumer cyclicals and communication are were quite in the red. So our, de our defensive list is long consumer defensive, healthcare and industrials, and it's short these uh, three down here. So that's, you can see why the list performed so well. Um, for the whole week, energy was on top. Now, Dave and I brought this to your attention last Saturday when we said that uh, on the weekly chart of XLE, which is the sector ETF. So this energy is more broad, but just focusing on the sector ETF for the week. Um, we had plowed down that week before and hit our moving averages here. And we said we wouldn't be surprised if it bounced in the following week. And it certainly did. And especially with the the catalyst, the macro of, of you know, the war and stuff like that. So uh, ETF performances now, this is just focusing on the S&P 500 sectors and the market ETFs, diamonds was 0.77 for the week, IWM really struggling. We did see some impact of that in our lists. Well, actually we, we had a big problem this past week because we were down for two days, right? So we didn't get a full sample for the week anyway, but on the days that we had uh, IWM really suffering, um, it pulled us we had some exposure to small caps and it, it did impact us so definitely a problem whereas friday we bounced back a little bit uh, because friday some of the small caps you know did better i mean not still wasn't a great day but did better um spy beat out the cues and then as far as our sector etfs here it looks like, of course, XLE, the energy, XLI industrials. You would know, have had some of the defense contractors doing okay in there. And uh, REITs uh, bounce back and utilities bounce back for the week pretty well. So those were the ones that suffered the week previous when it was all about like interest rates. And that was the big thing. The war actually did something to kind of changed the tune a little bit with interest rates because it was like, well, maybe the Fed won't be as aggressive. If, if the U.S. is going to support Israel, for example, um, then maybe, you know, the Fed would be more dovish, perhaps. Um, I mean, that's speculation. The market, I'm not, I'm kind of reiterating what the market and how it thinks, but that doesn't mean it's true. It just, it's the sentiment, you know, and the market isn't uh, a vehicle that always gets things right. You know, it kind of factors in things that it knows or can anticipate, but that doesn't mean it's right. Um, and so they look at it and go, well, Fed might be going easier on us. All right, let's, let's rally the REITs. Let's rally utilities. <laughs> and that's what you see. So, um, and this consumer discretionary was really bad, minus 1% there uh, compared to the other sectors that were green, except for basic materials. And the basic materials had a, suffered a little bit because of the strength of the dollar. Now, even though treasuries, you know, weren't arguing for a higher dollar, the, the war, the, the um, sort of flight to quality aspect kept the dollar a bit bit more elevated. 
Here's Friday's map of the market. So you can see NVIDIA started to uh, get hit a bit. Some of the other semiconductors, uh, see Google and Meta both getting hit, Amazon and Tesla, so discretionary. And strength was in the energy. Strength was in the healthcare plans. And we had, um, I mean, this is a good time of year between now and Black Friday. It's supposed to be a good time of year for consumer defensive and to some degree discretionary. The thing that's going to interfere with discretionary now, of course, is, you know, the consumer has been impacted by higher interest rates, more credit card exposure now. We've been impacted by concerns about the future with worlds acting kind of crazy. So, um, but the consumer staple side, we, we we still need our staples. Everybody still needs that. So maybe we can do without a few like discretionary spending, but defensive we certainly need, right? Um, insurance, saw some green. JP Morgan, Wells Fargo earnings, pop them up, right? And that's the other thing, we are can entering you know, a heavier week next week for earnings than even last week. Uh, so keep that in mind as we go forward here. There's your utilities doing good. Here's your defense contractors. Remember, Boeing isn't totally defense, even though it's in this category. Uh, but we've seen this movie before. And, and to a massive degree back in 9-11 when Boeing went down like crazy and General Dynamics went up like crazy. Lockheed Martin, Northern Grumman all went up. So I've seen this movie before when there's <laughs> wars. Map of the market for the week. And um, you can still see how Tesla was having some struggle this week compared to previous weeks. Um, Lily just shot up. It had an, it had an incredible run in, this, in the summer and even into August. And then it uh, pulled back a bit and had a really strong week though so something continues with lily i think it's specifically in the weight loss area if i'm not mistaken where it's getting some of its uh power here to continue to move higher um and definitely different tail there with pfizer so that's the map of the market for the week it's always interesting to look at though and uh and see, you know, things like Avco, you know, really strong for the week, and, and AMD or Texan down, like just the haves and the have-nots. I always find it interesting. And then to look into, so what this does for me is, is I can see this at a glance and then go and research what was the driver of that. And that helps sort of add to my library of information on what causes things to really respond you know when does news become important when can you ignore it you know some stocks have like 100 pieces of news every day how do you interpret it all how do you follow it all right uh, but there are some meaningful things and obviously if avco does 4.49 percent for the week you know and uh, the other semis are all down uh, something's going on Okay, Q's uh, versus the SPY for October. Um, so first off, the Q's normally has a better October than the SPY. And we've talked about this before, that October is not a down month. It's just a volatile month. And so here you see that good, you know, a positive month on both aspects here. But the uh, the Q's, oh, sorry, the Q's beat the SPY. Yeah, Q's beat the SPY just slightly. And um, here's how it rolls through the through the month. We're coming into this mid-month seasonality and third Friday, which uh, we'll talk about here momentarily. And the last trading day of the month is supposed to be down. Now, when we rolled into October and, and expected a good first day of the month, it was kind of flattish. Do you remember, Dave? We didn't really have that great of a first day. Um, but 
if we're going to perform as we have, then probably this mid month is going to be important this week that we have coming up. And so it does does tie into earnings, you know, and what are we expecting? I've I've heard previous to to entering this month even that we would be expecting a pretty reasonable earnings season. Like it should be good. Um, but that's again speculation. So we'll have to see how it plays out. This is IWM versus SPY for October and the small caps. The small caps historically kick in in November. And so from May until October, it's not the best for small caps. Now, you might need a little bit of exposure to them for some of those days when they really do, you know, perform well. But overall, it's not the best exposure um, until you get into November. And then from November to April, that's when they tend to shine. So again, you can see how some some days that you know Third Friday, for example, I mean IWM hardly is positive, where SPY is 0.46. So what do you see here, Dave, with the uh, mid month e ETFs? Um, so this is mid month seasonality, and this is the ETFs. What what pops out at you? Yeah, well, it started on Thursday, technically, right? So it's the ninth through 14th business day of the month, I believe. So that's what's in this calendar, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So we've had we had two days, and we have not had that robust uh, kick to it yet. So maybe the next three or four days of the, of this week will be a little bit more powerful or or um, bullish. Well, this, I mean, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, we we did have a fair amount of distraction and probably some reshuffling of the deck only because i mean you haven't had an incident like what we just saw since you know 50 years ago 1973 or whatever right so uh pretty pretty big event and i think that probably messed up this calendar a little bit but um you know we still have to look at it and 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 say is there a, a seasonal reason that this tends to come around and because we have quite a few samples of it. So is, is there a reason for it, right? Why do some of these ETFs perform better in the middle of October than others, right? Yeah. So can you think of uh, anything, anything that leaps out? Give us an example if you think of something. Well, oil, I mean, that's on the short side. We have oil, USO, XOP, those kinds of things even the individual stocks but we're coming off that summer season uh, seasonality still right the strength of right. oil is during the summer and then the driving season starts to meander down as we get to fall and winter so that one makes sense and on the long side it's just risk on for most things chips you got the socks smh financials we also have a lot of financial earnings in october uh, communications healthcare. so these are all the the strong sectors uh, and yeah i think that that could be some reason yeah i could i could i could lean on this i mean it says so of, of our universe we have 96 in here and uh positive values by percent change 69 percent versus 31 here mm -hmm. so it's, it's telling you that the skew really is to the bullish side so um you know even if you don't specifically lean on this can you use the general backdrop to your advantage like if smh is going to be strong then what are the best semiconductors to to participate in and if you don't want full exposure to the group go in and find your best semis to be long and your worst ones to be short you know or short the etf right it's another way to do it and when i look at the individual stocks within this mid-month seasonality we have some that are having earnings this week like bank of america uh, a lot of the financials here so there could be an overlay of but they tend to have earnings at the same time this this mid-month and um they tend to have good yeah. earnings they're more bullish here and based on how the default is set here for these sliders we have 284 symbols being pulled and uh, again 75 percent of these symbols you know perform positively um and this is the average uh, per percent change 0.73 so um you know there there could be some really good standouts here that you can focus on. Um, and we've got, you know, again, a, 
more symbols that here represented than we had sectors to account for it on the short side. Um, and then that's that's a typical problem. It's some some months and weeks that we do this. It's it's tough to find some good shorts. Um, but I mean, there's some pretty interesting ones in this list that I'm looking at right here. So uh, maybe there's some opportunity. And maybe maybe like you know eBay and EL and stuff KR like this is all retail. And so this typically the season starts in August and goes to Black Friday for these retailers. And maybe this is just that sort of hump in the middle before we get to Black Friday where they pull back. Maybe that's the reason historically that, you know, these per perform so poorly. We also have some retail data coming up this this week as well. So maybe, yeah, maybe sure. October this week, it's, it's showing weakness. And, and we then we end the week. Yeah. We end yeah. the week on uh, expiration here. Or did you have something before? No, no. I was saying we end the week with third Friday of the month, and yeah. which is also bullish, but not as strong as mid month seasonality. But for the the one day, it's expected to be plus 0.46 for the spider. And we see strength in, in staples, financials again, um, healthcare, basic materials, that kind of thing. And on the short side, it's, again, it's hard to find. We still have oil, short, some biotech, uh, IBB, XBI, and gold. So it's a little more bullish kind of risk on day for the, the Friday. Yeah, yeah, I see that. And then we have our stocks here. Mm -hmm. And again, it's good to find ones that are already represented by the parent ETF. But um, some of the ARK again, kind of symbols, Roku, DocuSign, those could be weak based on the Almanac. And Schwab, yeah, like Schwab here. Schwab has earnings on Monday and uh, it's expected to do well this week as well. So Now here's... Uh, Here's AMD, and yet, so it it does. It's it's one of those flippy things again, where we have the semi, like we have the semiconductors doing good for mid month, and then all of a sudden on. So I mean, I would include AMD as a potential candidate here. Mm -hmm. But then you go to the third Friday and all of a sudden AMD shows up as a short here. Yeah. So we've, we've seen this movie before, too, where, you know, on the last day of a, of a trading month, um, you know, a bunch of stocks are supposed to be up for the day or whatever or down for the day. And then the, the very next day, the first trading day of the month, it's a com complete flip. Right. Everything that was strong that one day is now supposed to be weak the next day. And that does present some great opportunity if they actually rally that one day. And then you're going into a turn of the month effect or like this, you're going into an expiration event. I would lean on that. I would use that information. I think it's good to to do that because, you know, it's expiration is more like an event. Right? It's not like any regular day of the week. Right. Mm -hmm. So. Okay, so there you go. And then we've got our calendar. Yeah, so there's a lot of Fed speak this week. Um, the other theme is with US retail sales on Tuesday. Um, again, some more Fed speak and home builder information, home builder confidence index. But the key uh, event this week will be, I think, Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern, the Fed Beige Book. And the Fed Beige Book is a summary of economic conditions. Kind of a snapshot of how the economy is doing and the, the fed usually relies on that for their fomc meeting so if we get a snapshot of that um, before they actually have their meeting we can see if there's anything major or different in there that could uh, sway them to be more hawkish or dovish so that's an important report on wednesday uh, we also have housing starts building permits again with the housing theme and on thursday existing home sales u.s leading economic indicators tons of fed speak and friday more fed speak so um it's going to be what's the tone of the fed the, what's the data in the fed in the beige book that they are going to rely on and then again the status of the economy how how well are we holding up still well yeah the, the initial 8 30 initial job claims on thursday should be 
an important one too. Yeah. And in terms of earnings, um, we're starting to pick up with earnings. Monday, we have Charles Schwab. Tuesday, Johnson & Johnson, along with many others like Bank of America, many financial stocks, United Airlines. Wednesday is a big one, Netflix, also Tesla. So that could affect the, the NASDAQ and many other symbols um, throughout the, the week. So you've got to check your list against these in all sectors. And again, Wednesday, Thursday, quite a few financials and um, earnings. So check your list. Sounds good. Okay, well, we have our mandate for the week. Um, things are probably going to heat up more. Um, I don't think I don't think we're at the point yet where you can say we're over the hump and it's going to be less. I think it's going to heat up more yet. So uh, keep your eyes on the, the news and think of your groups related to that. And have yourself a great trading week.